So far in this series, I've talked in general terms about what we know of Shakespeare's life from contemporary sources, and I've focused on two of his Stratford friends, Richard Quiney and Thomas Green. In this video, I'm going to talk about Richard Field, another of Shakespeare's Stratford connections. Field was just two and a half years older than Shakespeare, and grew up in a house on Bridge Street, just a short walk away from the Shakespeare's house in Henley Street. In 1556, Shakespeare's father John sued Richard Field's father, Henry Field, over a debt. And when Henry Field died in 1592, John Shakespeare was one of the appraisers of his property. The two men worked in similar professions, John Shakespeare as a glover and Henry Field as a tanner. In the small and closely knit community of Stratford, the two children inevitably knew each other. The reason I'm particularly interested in Richard Field is that he provides a link between the William Shakespeare who grew up in Stratford-upon-Avon and the William Shakespeare who turned up after a gap of several years in London. Field left Stratford for London and in 1579, at the age of 17, he began his apprenticeship as a printer. On February the 2nd, 1585, Shakespeare's twin children, Hamnet and Judith, were baptised at the Holy Trinity Church in Stratford and, apart from court documents in 1589 naming him along with his parents in a land dispute, that's the last we hear of Shakespeare until September the 20th, 1592, when a work written by another playwright, Robert Greene, supposedly on his deathbed, makes an apparent reference to Shakespeare as an upstart crow. Greene also talks about a tiger's heart wrapped in a player's hide, which is a reference to Henry VI Part Three, which is generally recognised by scholars these days as a collaboration between Shakespeare and Christopher Marlowe. So Shakespeare was active on the London theatre scene by 1592. And this is where Shakespeare's childhood neighbour Richard Field comes in. In 1593, Field published the minor epic Venus and Adonis, Shakespeare's first and, during his lifetime, most popular work. The first four editions were all printed by Field, who also printed the first edition of two other poems by Shakespeare, The Rape of Lucrece in 1594 and The Phoenix and the Turtle in 1601. Field is significant not only because he printed these works by Shakespeare, but because of his close association with a wide range of other works, works which Shakespeare was indebted to in his own writing. Field was apprenticed to George Bishop, but Bishop farmed him out to Thomas Vautrolier, a French printer, and Vautrolier subsequently died in 1587, and then two years later, in 1579, Field married Vautrolier's widow. Or perhaps his daughter, depending on which version of the story we go by. The books Field inherited from Vautrolier, together with the books he himself printed, include the works of Ovid in Latin, Hollinshead's Chronicles, Thomas North's translation of Plutarch, Orlando Furioso, uh, translated by John Harrington, uh, Robert Greene's Pandosto, and other works which Shakespeare drew on in his own writing. Now, there's some debate about whether and to what extent Shakespeare may have accessed these texts directly through Field, he may have done, or he may have read them via another source. What I'm interested in, though, is that a near neighbour of Shakespeare in Stratford, one whose father followed a very closely related profession to that of Shakespeare's father, and someone whom he undoubtedly knew as a child, went on to become one of the top London printers and printed three of Shakespeare's own works, along with a number of other works that are also closely connected with Shakespeare. In the next video, I'll be taking a look at the broader picture and show what Quiney and Green and Field and other Stratford friends of Shakespeare tell us about Shakespeare himself. Don't forget to subscribe, turn on notifications, and if you're able, join as a channel member or follow me on Patreon.
Thank you.